Hi everyone, I'm Matt from uh, Jio.com and uh, I am a reefaholic. Coral, fish, sand, rock, pumps, water, salt. We enjoy these things so much, I enjoy it so much that uh, I, I now have an opportunity to share it because I enjoy video and I want to give a big shout out to Than at Tidal Gardens. It's his videos that inspired me to create this series. We are in my office right now, and I was lucky enough to have an awesome partner, Annie. Say hi, Annie. Hi. And uh, together we built this office. And you know a weird thing? I am in China. I live in China. As an American living in China, I'm called an expat. And I had an opportunity to build an office. And the first thing that I really was interested in doing was integrating a tank. This office was nothing when we came here. It was literally just concrete and pillars. One of those pillars was the width of what this tank is and the depth of what this tank is. So um, when I chose the size of the tank, I chose one meter by one meter by 70 centimeters tall. This created a really beautiful three-side tank that I can see from, from my desk, from uh, Annie's desk, and from the main office area, which I'm standing in right now. Design and construction started in June of 2013 with an empty room. The tank didn't get installed until that subsequent August. This gave me a blank slate to lay up the work area and the inner office. I know I wanted to have a tank to be the centerpiece, viewable from as many locations around the office as possible. So I kept the design as an open layout, with only one main executive space enclosed with walls and glass. I decided to put the tank alongside one of the two pillars that came from the original layout and then work out from there. It was perfect because the pillars were one meter deep and wide, which made it easy to choose a cube style glass tank with a height of 70 centimeters. So I built a canopy box out from one of the pillars and prepared the area for the tank. I decided on a reinforced tile foundation to take out any weight or settling concerns and also make cleanup a cinch. My initial thoughts were to make an enclosed box with doors for the top and to put the tank and stand underneath after the area was built in. But before I could get the door hinges in, I took a look at the roughed in box and decided to go another way. I decided to leave the canopy open and then have the lights and the top of the tank totally visible. I'd hide as many of the fixtures and top components as I could, but you would be looking at a completely open environment. I wanted as much viewable area as possible, so I decided to have only one solid wall extending out from one part of the fish tank, defining that part of the office. I have the other wall separating the other half of the executive area laid up in glass. It was a good give and take between privacy and keeping the area as open as possible. I had all the electric laid into the stone walls and the floor that fed through the tank into the stand, as well as plugs on the canopy area that supply power to the lighting. I wanted to give the area a feeling of water, so I encapsulated the adjacent pillar in blue glass and used white as much as possible. Combine the glass wall, the wood floor, and the main white tiled office area, and you almost feel like you're in an aquarium. When they delivered the tank, it slid right into place, leaving a small gap on either side to work in electrical and plumbing for the auto top-off. And what I ended up with was a beautiful cube of glass and plumbing, clearly viewable from three distinct sides, with a glass wall almost looking as if it was growing directly out of the tank itself. The sump was square as well, and had a winding four compartment system. I had it designed to offer me a space for the drop, the protein skimmer, then the refugian, and then the return. Plumbing was fairly simple, consisting of a drop made of two inch PVC and a return built in with inch and a half. 
ball valves and double union shutoffs all the way around. The plumbing entered and exited the tank via an overflow box that I designed into the back wall of the tank. On top of that, I decided to paint this wall black and use black acrylic as the construction material. The black made a beautiful contrast in the coral and the fish instead of that really neon style blue. The drain was built according to the Durso method and I haven't had any need to tweak it at all. It's quiet as a mouse. The tank itself was constructed with one centimeter inch treated glass stitched together with silicone leaving about seven centimeter ridge around the top edge allowing for most of the surface of the water to breathe in in open air. The only thing left to do at that point was to throw in some water, season the tank, and we were good to go. The completed system holds about 807 liters, that's 213 gallons, minus rock with a balanced sump, and boy, is she beautiful. So now, fast forward to today. It's been about six months since I put the first invertebrates in the tank and everything is going fantastic. You can see behind me, I'm sitting at my desk and this is the view that I have every day. So there you have it, that's the setup of the tank. Now I know that most people when they turn on these blogs or things, they're interested in seeing coral, color, beauty, and I guarantee you're gonna see it. I have a beautiful macro focus lens and I love taking beautiful pictures of my coral. For example, bah! Or, or even a little, In a future episode, I'd like to get into the equipment that I chose in the construction and setup of my tank, but that'll have to wait until a little bit later. For the next episode, I'm gonna take you on an interesting drive through the streets of China as I pick up a couple of pieces of fish for my house and office tank from a local Chinese fish shop. I'll introduce you to my house tank and you'll even meet Neil, my ribbon eel. Now, if you have a reef, you know that every reef has a personality all of its own. Dependent on the fish, the invertebrates, or the corals that you have, each one of those pieces has a personality all its own that adds to the overall reef. I want to introduce you to my family via something I dub the Reef Family Roll Call. Reef Roll Call. Today's roll call is gonna be about Fung. Fung is one of the first fish I ever got in 2012 at my office tank when I moved to China. Now, Fung is about two and a half years old now. He's not a typical sailfin tank. He's a day jar dinny tank. And you can tell by his size and also the fact that when he's young, he has vertical stripes they kind of change as he gets older. It becomes quite beautiful. Fung is the matriarch of the tank, but it wasn't always that way. When I first got him, he was about the size of a half dollar, and he was timid and shy amongst the other fish. That has definitely changed. Now, I regard him as the king of my reef. And he's a good king. What's that saying in Spider-Man? With great power comes great responsibility. Well, Fung definitely wields his power well. He actually defends some of the weaker fish. I've seen him actually break apart fights, but he also knows how to lay the hammer down if he has to. Of course, if you get up to the tank, he's more than happy to flay out his sail fin and give you a little show too. He's, he's been one of my favorites and I'm glad that he's survived so long. Uh, I would hate to lose him. Check back for more videos about how I take care of my reef tank and subscribe if you'd like. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, 
just post them below. I'll try and answer them as best as I can. This has been Matt with Matt's Reef. May your pH never wander. May your nitrates never rise. Take it easy. Every reef has a personality, and the fish, invertebrate, <laughs> adds to the family unit. I'm going to introduce you. Wawa, Wawa, what? The <laughs> time to highlight some of my family, so that you can get a person. The dog. The dog keeps sneezing. All right, let's try that again.